Tov Shem Pei. Baruch Hu Ma Shem Hashem. Igu Shem Tov Lak Tavokam Tai Chos Shav Oilam. Tereshi Ava Rav Agorin Rabbi Yaakov Zev Smishlit and the very important topic of children and Hilchus Mukta. A Rav Smishlit. Recently, just we had an interesting shaila that um, I thought was simple, but it turned into a whole sugya journey into the klalim of Mukta and Ketanim. Someone had, uh, for Yom Tov, he had grandchildren in the house and he had a lot of toys all over the floor. And he wanted to know, could he pick up the toys? Can an adult move toys that are muktza? And it's clearly muktza toys. Then he had a shayla. If he's allowed to move the toys because they're in the way, could he play with the children, the grandchildren? Could he give them the muktza toys? Now, you're probably wondering, what's the shayla? If you're telling me the toys are muktza, how can an adult play with the toys, give it to the children, pick it up? So if it's a klisha malach delesa, you could move with the tzara gufa mekaymai. But assuming it's a real muktza, what could be the question? And he had a question, in fact, that the toys were high shelf and the child says, uh, please give me the toys, the child couldn't reach it. Can an adult move toys of muktza that, we, that are considered real muktza? So, what's important to learn a little bit the klolem of chinuch because it's negeya to this sugi as well. Midaraisa, a child that's not a bar mitzvah, is not chayiv in any mitzvah. So he could do what he wants. But there's a mitzvah the rabbanon called chinuch that a child has to have practice. He can't go from being potter and everything to chayiv and everything. So there's a, there's a mitzvah of chinuch. What is the age of Chinuch? So the Gemara in Sukkah, Membei says, Kotn ha-yodeya l'naneya. He knows how to shake lulav. He's chayiv and lulav. Now, why? Because once he could do it, then he should be doing it. Now, there's the obvious question that the mitzvah of lulav is not shaking lulav. The mitzvah is picking it up. Once you pick it up, he yodza. Nanuim is a mailah. Why is he after that how to make nanuim? So there's a famous Yisrael, the Briskurov, and others say it as well that if he can't do the mitzvah properly with the nanuim, then he's not ready for the mitzvah. The Baruch Shalom only expects someone to do something that they could do properly. If he can't do nanuim, he's too young, he's too immature, he's potter. So the share of chinuch is when he could do the mitzvah properly. And the Paiskim say the general age for chinuch in mitzvahs is approximately five or six years old. There are some children that are more mature, they might start earlier. There are some less developed children more than they're more immature so for them the age is five, six maybe even seven when a child's ready to do the mitzvah he's not to do a mitzvah this is all regarding mitzvahs when it comes to averis not to put on the lights not to play with muktza that we find in shulchan aruch shin mem gimel and mr bur and sif and gimel explains it the shear of chenech in, in Isurim, in Loisa says, is a young, is an earlier age. That's what the place can refer to as a bar havana. A bar havana is not necessarily a gil chenech. You tell him, don't put on the lights, it's Shabbos. So, if when you leave the room he puts on the lights, so he's not ready. But if he understands Shabbos, you don't put on the lights, he doesn't have to have a havana in the, the Kedusha Shabbos, but he knows Shabbos, there's no lights, then he's a Bar Havana. And he, in fact, cannot put on the lights. So Chinuch is totally in doing mitzvahs, it's a share of Chinuch. Isurim is totally in a Bar Havana. The Paiskim, and this is really based on a Toysavis, you'll see the Toysavis in Kuf Chafalaf on the Damascus uh, Shema, that it seems that a two or three year old is not yet a Bar Havana. But a four year old, or even a three and a half year old that's mature, then he's a bar havana. He could be told, don't do this, he won't do it. So the shear of chinuch is when he's ready. The bar havana, fisurim, is when he knows not to do it. Now, all the paiskim say that if he does it, when you're not looking, he's not ready to, to, for, for chinuch. And I spoke once to a father, and he was very frustrated. He told his child not to, not to do malacha. The child does it, so he hits the child, and it's a whole war. So I told him, you don't understand, your child is not a Bar Havana. If he's not responding, then leave him alone. You know, he's not off the derech, four years old. 
You know, a child's 15, Michal Shabbos, that's a problem. But at four years old, he's not off the derech. The derech says he, he doesn't understand not to do it. So you're making Shabbos into a battlefield. That's not correct. If he's not ready, he's not a baravana. And leave him the way he is. Let him, tell, let him develop properly. But the boys, they all agree that a child that's not a bar havana is not mechoyev to keep Shabbos. I, I think if, he, if he's playing with muktza toys and he's not a bar havana, and to stop him is tzar balachayim. He's not, he's not mechoyev. He's not ready for chinuch. Oh. So now, Rabbi, say, let's talk tachlis. Let's talk about a toy that is a real muktza, not just klisha machlis, a real muktza toy. Is it mut? Mutter for me, the adult, parent, grandparent, sibling, to pick up the toy and give it to him, or pick up the toy and put it away, or even play with it. You're wondering, what kind of child is this? Uh, if it's Mukta, how could I? I? I'm adult. But think about it, it's very posh. It. The real Mukta is Mukta Machmas Gufa. A stone is Mukta. If you're learning outside on a nice summer day and it's a windy afternoon, you now want to pick up a stone from the ground and hold down the page of the Gemara because it's muktza. I am using it l'tzayrach gufay, but a kli a muktza machmas gufay. There's no het l'tzayrach gufay. If you before Shabbos you miyachad the stone, I'm going to use the stone. Oh, now you're talking business. So by being miyachad the stone, you made it into a keli, and therefore there's no problem of moving the stone. Now, I once cleared a shayla. Let's say I Shabbos, Erev Shabbos, I'm Yachad the stone. I did a good job. I used the stone on Shabbos. Can I give it to my next door neighbor to use it when I don't need it? He wasn't Yachad the stone. But to me it's Pashit. That if you could. Once I was Yachad, I made it into a keli. Once a keli for me, it's a keli for him. So here we see this very logical way of turning non muktz into muktz by mimi yachirit. Rabbi say a toy that's miyuchit for ktanim, why is that muktz? Enochanami in itself it's muktz, but the toy was designed and the parents bought it for the child, it's miyuchit for children. Why is it any worse than a stone that you miyachit before Shabbos? I'll give you a better example. Uh, perhaps it will we'll highlight my, my point. If the child's playing with the father's cell phone, or he's playing with the father's Dalad Minim, you know, the Lulav is a very good rifle, and the, uh, the Esrig is like a grenade, so he's playing with the father's Dalad Minim. Oh, that's a problem. That's Takamukhtza. Because it's not Miyuchit Fiktanim. My cell phone is not for him. But if a toy that was made for children, why is it Mukhtza? I'll give you a better example, okay? The Pais can say that medicine, antibiotics, if there's a chayil in the house, understandably it's not muktza. But let's say you have medicine from, from last year. It's in the medicine chest. That medicine is muktza. No one eats it. It's not a keli. It's not a beged. But let's say a person, Arab Shabbos, someone came down with an illness and he's going to use the medicine. So then it's a bias of chayilim. Medicine is not muktza. Today, many shuls have uh, medicine gemachs. That's also not muktza. The shul bought it to have it ready on Shabbos. So medicine is muktza. If miyachir is not muktza. Oh. So why isn't toys the same thing? You buy toys for children, even if it's muktza, but a child's allowed to play with it because he's loyegil lachinach, he's not a baravana. So why is it muktza for an adult? I'll tell you even a bigger chedesh. The Bajana Rav, the Dastar in the in Shin Ches Siv Gimel, says a Chiddush Pella, but he writes it, that if, let's say you have a friar person, every Shabbos he does Malach, he builds, he's a, he's a carpenter, and every Shabbos he builds. It's possible his ham is not Muktza. Even though he's doing an Issa, every bang is an Issa. But Muktza means it is segregated, it's set aside, set apart. But for the friar person, every Shabbos he uses it. Now, Rav Ozna in Chelek Ches, say Chelek Tes, Simen Ay in Ches, is not happy with that. But it's a Klisha Malach to listen. But even if you hold that a friar person's tool is Muktza, because it's wrong, but a Kotn Shaloyi Gil Achinach, who's not a Bar Havana, 
is 100% mutter to play with the toy. So why should it be mukta? I'll give you another example. You have an Atsala member that has a uh, phone or radio, or walkie-talk, whatever they have, all the, the radios, whatever it is. And Shabbos, he uses it like he uses it during the week. Whenever he needs, he uses it. It's pretty logical that it's not mukta. Because for him, it's miyuchit to use on Shabbos. But a child's toy is even less of a problem. Because not even Chilul Shabbos in the first place. You know, that's all the members doing a mitzvah that overrides Shabbos. But if he's not a baravon, it's not even an issa. And you'll see Rav Moshe in Chilul K, Simen Chav Beis, Yid Kotten Chav Zayin. It's a short tshuva. Someone asked him about Lego toys, if the muktza. So Rav Moshe responded, don't give Lego toys to children, because it's a chashash of boina, but they're not muktza. That was surprising. Don't give it to a child, but it's not muktza. Apparently, Moshe held that Lamaisa, since the children play with the Lego, it's not muktza. Now, why can't you give it to him? Oh, we'll soon see. Because you can't give a child to do an Issa, that's the Issa of Safinon, even a Tinnik Ben Yaimai. But it's very clear from Rav Moshe that even if it's Asa to play with, but if the children typically play with it, Loyagil Echinach is allowed to play with it, it's not mukt. Now, it could be Rav Moshe is talking about giving Legos to a child that's a Gil Echinach. And then it's very positive why it's Asa, because he's not allowed to play with it. I, why is it not Muktza? I'll tell you, Pashit. Because in the house, there are also young children that play with it, Beheta. But either way you learn, it seems from this tshuva that a toy, even if it's Muktza, but if children play with it, Beheta, because they're lo yigil, it should not be Muktza. Now, Rav Vosman, the tshuva I mentioned earlier, says this Mephorish. It's a little more elaborate. Rav Vosman says that why should a child's toy be muktza if for him there's no isa to play with it? But then he says an even bigger chedish. And he says, and even if you're in your house you only have children at a gil l'chinuch and they shouldn't play with the toys, could be their toys are not muktza. Ah, it's a gil l'chinuch. He says a very, very long shecha. He says the mitzvah of chinuch is on the parent, not on the child. So for the child, it's a regular toy. There's no problem to play with. It's the parent's problem. But the child's allowed to play with it. Mitzad adin. So Mamela, for him, it's not muktza. Okay, that's something that's questionable. But Rabbi Isai, Rav Vosna in that tshuva, says, items of a friar person is muktza. Like I told you earlier. But toys are for a child, that's lo yigi l'chinuch, is not muktza. So it comes out, and again, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but it comes out to me, that if you have children or grandchildren that are loyagil lechenach, not a baravana, and they play, and they have toys they play with constantly, and they left them on the floor, and yavo yain with kaneach, the mother has to, the father has to clean up. Lechayre, there's no problem for a parent to clean up those toys. Loyimi boy, if the toys are klisha molach de leisa, it's vade mutter because it's tzarech mekayma. You need the place. But even if it's not tzarech, not a klisha molach list, it's a real mukta. They play with stones that they weren't miyachid. But if that's what they play with, it's considered like muktza that the children miyachid it, and it should not be a problem. Now we'll soon see a child cannot be miyachid something, but the toys, they don't have to miyachid it. You bought to toys in the store, it was made for children, it's not muktza. According to this, it would be muktza for the parent to play with the child. If it's takana muktza, why not uh, bond with your grandchild and play with it? I know it sounds like a chiddush, but that's what it comes out. The next question is a little more challenging, and that is, if the toy is high up, and they ask you, please give me the toy, can you take the toy and give it to the child to play with? So you're wondering, what's the shayla? So here we come to another big yisoy in Ilchus Chinuch. The Mechab and Shin Mem Gimel quotes this, but it's really a sugya based on three psukim, Parashishmini, Acher Mais, and Emor. There's the Issa of Safina and Biyadayim. To make a long story short, a, a child that's Layig Yil Chenach could do what he wants. You're not going to stop him. But an adult can give Biyadayim an Issa to a child. 
That, the Lashen is even a Tinnik Ben Yoimai. Even if it's Lai Gila You can't supply, feed a child in Issa. You can't give a, a little baby Tarfus, blood, or you can't bring a little Kayin, a baby Kayin, into Oil Hames. As a Zweep Sukim. Why not? I, there's not a Chinuch. But there's an Issa Deraisa on an adult. Love the Afghan parents. There's an Issa Deraisa on an adult to supply biodayim Issa to the cotton. The cotton takes it on his own. It's fine. But you can't give him Issa. For a, an Issa, for, a, for an adult to give a, a child an Issa is the Issa Pashtun, Issa Deraisa of Safinan. I'll tell you a fascinating marshal that today is a little more challenging than it used to be. The Mishtibura in Shin Mem Gimel, Sif Cotton Gimel, has the following Ha'ara. A woman's expecting a child, and she's married to a Koyim, and all of her children naturally are Kehanim. Can she go into a hospital to deliver that baby? L'chayra, if the baby is a Zachar, then she's bringing a Koyim into Oyel HaMais. Now, you're saying, what do you mean? The baby's not even a day old, he's, he's just a minute old. But that's subpoena. So the Mishtibura says it's not a problem. Because it's a svek sveka. First of all, maybe the child will be a girl. There's no problem. And even if it's a boy, you know, Chaman al Islam, they could be a stillborn and won't survive the, the, the birth. So therefore, it's mut. Now, the problem is today that there are ultrasound sonograms that you could determine the gender of the child in advance. Maybe the Asian client has to find out what she's expecting. So the real terrorist is based on a Nayyid Bihud and Yeridaya Kama Mem Gimel. That says when you have a svek sveka, you only mechiyat mevara if you could mevara both svekas. Then you eliminated a suffix. If you could only mevara one of the svekas, even though you reduce it to a suffix, you're not mechiyat. This applies here also. You could be mevara what, what, the, what the, the child's gender is, but you can't be mevara so will survive. Now, in the mice, there are other truths, and more so that the who said there's a mace in the hospital at that time? So maybe it's a vaitis vex vega. My point only is that safinon is even on a little child. Oh. So then I was thinking for me to take a muktza toy and give it to the child, why isn't that safinon? I'll say, wait a minute. Blood, tarfis, tuma is the raisa. But muktza is the rabbanon. Who said safinon applies to a rabbanon? The answer is all the paiskim. Mr. Burr says it. Safina is shaykh by a deraisa and by a drabana. So, oibazoi, it comes out of modern nezach. The toy is not muktza. You could play with the toy, but you can't give it to the child because of safina. But that's incorrect. Because if we say it's not muktza, thank you, very good. If we say it's not muktza, there's no safina. But if you have a child's toy that is muktza, he decides to play with, with your cell phone and he's playing with it. Then giving it to him would be safinan. Or to give a child a Lego toy that he's going to build. So even though it's not muktza because it's miyachadak tanim, that would be safinan if you hold that it's boina. So the child could play on his own, but you can't hand it to a child. Now, Lamai says safinan is a very big sug. You'll have to do it in a, in a different shear. But there, there is a tzad to say if you put it down and a child takes it. Maybe it's not Safinon. So we'll leave it for a different time. But basically, to give a child Lego in his hands, if you hold his boina, and that would be a problem of Safina. The next question, I urge you approach with caution. Here's my Shiloh. The child is a little more sophisticated, doesn't play with toys. He wants to write, Tati, Zaydi, give me your pen. Can you take out your pen and give it to the child to play with? So the Chayra, that would be Safinon. You're giving a child a pen to write. So you're going to work around Safina. Maybe you'll put it down, the child will take it. Or maybe, according to the you'll rely on the Rajba, the Bialocha and Shin Gil brings a Rajba, you'll have to give an Isidra Abanan to a child, Litzorcha, if he really needs it. So you could assume that writing, if it's not Savashuris, um, is the Rabbanan. We're talking about giving a pen that there's no Safina. But it's still Muktsa. So the Chayra, how could you give a child muktza? It's a problem for you. Right? Forget about Safina, it's a problem for you. Oh. So I'm going to tell you, Pasha Techez, the Chayra. Lemaisa, a pen is a klisha melachtel isa. 
You and me, adults, are allowed to use a pen, let's say, I'll give you two examples. If you want to keep your finger on the place, but, you know, people learn so fast, they're afraid they're going to wear out their finger. So they want to use a pen to keep the finger on the place, to keep their place. You're allowed to use a pen. If you can't use your finger, Mr. Bruce says, you shouldn't use the Kishim Lacht list if you could avoid it. But let's say you can use your finger. You like using a pen. You're allowed to use a pen to keep the place. Or you want to scratch your back, you can't get it. So you're allowed to use a pen to scratch your back. Kishim Lacht list, it's a kufay. Of course, make sure you close it so it won't write all over your shirt. Then you have Ksiva and Teveya. But we're talking about that you're not doing anything wrong. A pen is a klisha malach to listen to Gufay. So why can I pick up my pen to give to my child al Tzarech Gufay? I could use it myself, so why can I give it to him? So here we come to a, a Pashat Einfall. The het of Tzarech Gufay is if you use the pen, the Tzarech Gufay of Heta. Scratching your back, keeping the place is fine. But if the child's going to write with it, that's not Tzarech Gufay, that's Tzarech Issa. And that's Taka Why. If the child wants to write with it, you can't give him crayons or markers or pens. That's Muktz. Now, if you have uh, crayons that are Meyuchit for Ketanim, and you consider a crayon as a Kaili, then you come back to the original Heta, it's not a problem of Muktzah. But, again, there's still a problem. If he's going to write with it, you're talking about Safina and on the Issa of writing. How about a child that's not in such a good mood? You want to make him a little freilach, so you pick up uh, three hammers and you start juggling, whatever. You do something, make a show out with we're using muktza. So he's not doing it, for, the parent's not doing it for himself, he's doing it for the child. But Avada, that would be considered Lutzayra Kufay. I want to make a show to show my child, you know. Other Moyla Atzmai never, we're not here with ourselves. And it's interesting, I saw in the Sefer Archa Shabbos, Chelik Beis, Ahmed Yud Beis, he says, this you said, he says, a parent that wants to do something to entertain the child, it's, it's considered Tzayr Gufi of the parent. And his raya is an eyes on the raya from a Tzayr and Erev and Asam Achtes. Tzayr says, if you didn't see a, used a ring, even though it was Muktza, those type of rings in those days was Muktza, because he did it, L'tayel Bem Esatinik, he did it to give pleasure to a child. So for a parent to pick up a muktza to entertain the child would be tzayah gufay of the parent. How about if the parent wants to get some sleep, Shabbos afternoon, the children are running around, you take out three hammers from your tool chest, here, go down the block, no one lives there, it's a quiet area, and bang, all you want. Talk about there's no carrying, it's all with an air. So you're giving your children muktza to get them out of the house so you could sleep. So that's also the chayra would be the tzayah gufay of the parent. He has the benefit, he's able to have some quiet. So using moving muktzah to get the children out of the house, you could rest, it would be a tzayra gufa. Okay. Now let's think about what we said earlier. You want to give a child a pen, but it's a problem because there's no heta, the tzayra gufa. Why? Because it's a malachas is. But now that we said the parent's benefit is mutter, so let me, let me share with you a beautiful ha'ara that I think might have some potential to it. I was once by a uh, Shevard Brach, I was once, I'm sorry, someone told me, I wasn't there, but someone told me he was once by a Shevard Brachis. Now this is a wonderful Baal Tzedaka that took a, a Bacha who didn't have uh, a family and he basically made sure he, he, he grew properly, he shtayed. He made him a, a Shabbos Shevard Brach when he got married. Right before Hanukkah, I think it was Metzor, Hanukkah was Metzor, Shabbos or Sunday, I'm not sure, but one of the two. Bekitza, by the Shabbos Shevard Brachis, he made a beautiful Shabbos Shevard Brachis. And he spoke how the chassins like Mamash like Torah and Chanukah is the end of Shatar Shabal Peh. And just to show how much he appreciates the chassin, he took out a gorgeous silver Chanukah Menayim and said, I'm going to give the chassin a gift, the chassin a gift, because he's Mamash like the, he's the essence of Torah. And it was a beautiful presentation and everybody really felt very touched. Someone called out, why are you touching Muksa? Drop it! <laughs> Chanukah Menayim is Muksa. And he dropped it and there went his whole speech. So the, the, the lesson I learned from that story is before, never be mevayi someone barabim. You know, you can tell him afterwards. But especially if he was right and you're wrong, then you're really being mevayi someone for no reason. Now how could that, the Rav HaMechiach be wrong? 
Who doesn't know that a Hanukkah Menorah is Muktza? So there's a Toysvis in Shabbos Dav Samach, which is really based on a Sugi and Beya, that on Yom Tiv you're allowed to give a gift, even though the person can't use the gift, but the, the Simcha that it engenders when you give a gift to someone, you feel good, he feels good, who? but someone feels good, both feel good, that's Sarech Yom Tiv. Zakt Rebbe Kiva Ega, and this is in the Friedman Shachon Narach, it's, it's an addition, but they found it afterwards, but this Rebbe Kiva Ega is L'shayin Kotshay, Simen Shin Vav, you're allowed to give a Chosin, a Drasha Gishang, which is a Matona, a Leichter, not Chanukah Menorah, but a, a Leichter on Shabbos. Ah, who doesn't know that a Leichter on Shabbos is Muktza? But this is considered Klisha Malachter Le'isa, and it's a Tzarech Gufay. Ah, we don't move Leichter on Shabbos. That's if it was burning Bein Hashemashais. So then the Leichter was a basis to the Eish, and then it's Muktza the whole Shabbos. But an unlit Menorah, or unlit Leichter, is only Klisha Malachter Le'isa, and Kivayi considered that Tzarech Gufay. What? Same like Taisa says. Taisa says you allow it's the simchas yamtiv simchas chas and v'kala the simcha of giving it. Taisa's lashon is that because simchas yamtiv is considered tzarek gufay. So the pkiva egin that's pkiva egin diuk you allow to give a gift. Now of course the problem of giving a gift on Shabbos so in probably you mark it before Shabbos, but it's a very pashtavana. I'm allowed to use the Hanukkah menorah for a heter. If I'm making a play, I'm allowed to use it right a skit. So why can I use it? That I should be happy, the chassan should be happy, and we have a mitzvah simchas chassan the kala. So I bazoi l'chayer. Maybe I could give the child a pen because I feel good that the child has a pen. But of course, it's a big chilek. If you give a gift to keep, that's that makes simcha. I give a, something just to use. Who said there's such a simcha? And also, if you notice, both cases, the case of the gemara beya, there's a simchas yamtiv involved. The case of kivayga, there's simchas chassan the kala involved. Here, the simcha of a child playing with the pen. No, he's not keeping the pen. You're giving me a fa- fancy pen as a gift. You can talk about it, but you're not giving a fancy pen. It's just a simcha of using it. I don't think you have that hat. But it's interesting, if you, a child asks you, he wants to play with money. So, is, can you give the child money? So, we said earlier that, that toys are mutter, but this is a problem. First of all, money is... Not miyuchet v'ktanim, and also in Shin Yud Siv Zayin, the Mechaber says that that the Mishnah explains it like that: that money is muktzah mach mas gufay. It's not a kli; it's inherently valueless. That's something to stress in America over and over. Money is valueless; it's not a keli. But whatever the svara is, it is not miyuchet. It is not a kli shemach la'isa. It's muktzah mach mas gufay. So, really, the child has no head to play with money. It's not a machlisa. So therefore there will be a problem of money as well. Someone told me he wanted to give his, I think it was grandchild, a ball. And someone said, you can't move balls on Shabbat, to the and mechaba, and shochon that balls are mukta. So he came to me all surprised, where is this mechaba? Is it true? I told him it's a little bit true and most, mostly inaccurate. Now let me explain. The mechaba in Shin Ches, Sif Mem Hey, it says the Pharish Asa Lasachik Bishabis the Yamtu Bikadur. You're now allowed to play ball on Shabbos. And there are Moz Makel. Zok the Mishtabura, why is the Machabold you can't play ball on Shabbos? Because balls are mukta. The Ramah says, even if balls are mukta, but if Miyachid it before Shabbos, it's Ais Muktza. You've been playing ball all these days and all these weeks. So why is it mukta? So the Ramah is easy to understand, the ball is not Muktza. But the problem is, what does the Mechaba hold? So the way the Mepharshim explain, you have to realize, we're not, this is not, the Shekhanarach was not living in America, they didn't have balls, and balls wasn't, you know, a person's obsession. What did they do? They took Ichveis, you know, when I remember when I was growing up, we took a paper cup, and stuffed it with some, some paper towels, and folded it over, and now we made a ball. They made a makeshift ball. But they took something that was not a keli and they made it into a, you know, bedieved uh, ball. So the mechaba holds that's not enough of a keli. Playing ball is a pustanarishkeit, and it's not really a keli. 
So you can't turn a non keli into a keli. Now, that's in the Mechabah's times. And Mechabah did not live in America that millions of people watch a, a, a Super Bowl more than the president's inauguration. So obviously, ball playing is, uh, you know, uh, something very important. But anyhow, the Mechabah's ball was not a real ball. It was a makeshift ball. And also, ball playing wasn't significant enough to make it into a cave. All the Heintige Paiskim, even the Svardish Paiskim, that go with the Mechaba, that a ball in times of Shulchan Aruch was Muktzah, but the Paiskim say, the Shemir Shabbos says, is in Tezang Yilches, the Archa Shabbos, Beis Chavtes, that today's balls that are manufactured and made and sold, it's a keli before you start, and ball is something that's done typically. So according to the Mechaba, and certainly according to Ramah, Balls today are not muktzah. Now, of course, balls that are play on the on the grass, you have a problem of mashvei guma. So we're not going to get into that. But a basketball that's played on cement, where there's no problem of mashvei guma, for children, it's not muktzah. Of course, the adults should be doing better things with their time. The Bais Yosef quotes to Yishalmi that the Tor Shim in a great city that much much chesed was destroyed. And one of the reasons is because they played ball on Shabbos. Now I'm certain it wasn't Chilol Shabbos. They had an Erev and they were Mayachad the ball and they Mayachad the game and all. But it was a Chilol and Kedusha Shabbos. Shabbos, the Meiri's Loshen is, is Kodesh HaKadoshim. And don't waste Kodesh HaKadoshim playing ball. So if it wasn't Chilol Shabbos, it was Chilol Kedusha Shabbos. So balls for children are not Muktza and therefore it makes sense for a, child, for a parent or grandparent to move the ball, give the child a ball, is not a problem, because ball is not muktza. So that Rav HaMechiach was right, that the Mechaba holds balls are muktza, but has no relevance with Manazeh. People ask about a battery-operated toy. Now this, there are EF Shlefaratam Ki Rabimheim, there are so many toys, but I'm talking about a battery-operated toy that can be used by operating the battery and it goes by itself or it, you could play with it manually without any involvement of the battery operated part of it. So I, what I think the way to look at it is uh, to share with you a, a phenomenal question, something that you know when you hear it, 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 uh, you know, it sounds strange but it's a very penetrating question. One of the classic examples of a klisha malach is a pot, a cook a chalon pot. Why? What do you mean? Kipshutai. You cook chalon, that's a klisha malach but do you ever make a cheshbin? How, how many hours do you take to cook chalant? I never made a chalant, but five hours, right? How many days do you use the chalant pot not through Issa? You make chalant on Thursday, so by states of Thursday night, you have tayameh. So taking tayameh is not mukt, is not Issa, right? By states of Friday afternoon, is tayameh. Friday night, by states of is tayameh. Shabbos, you'll have to take chalant. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, you have leftovers of the tayameh. So you have a whole, come out a whole week, you're taking cholent from a pot that's not doing any yisra. Most of the use of the cholent pot is to store food beheta. When is it a klisha malach del yisra? The few hours that you uh, cook it. When it's on the cho- on the blech Friday night, there's no yisra taking place, it's fully cooked. So the cholent is used to eat, to, f- to feed people, but for five hours you cook it, why is it malach del yisra? So if you look at cl- carefully at the Mishnah Bura, when he speaks about a pot, he says that since it's made to cook, you don't buy a chalon pot to storage. Mr. Bura says that even though you did, when there's food in it, it's not muktza, but the mere fact that it's bought and designed to cook, it's a klisha malachtalis. Now the Heintike Poiskim take this nuance and extend it. Today they sell types of pots that are also designed to use without cooking. As a salad, for example, corningware or Pyrex casserole, it's, dish, it's glass dishes that you could bake in it or cook in it, but it's also made to make a salad and you could serve it in that elegant dish as it is. That is not muktza. That's a klisha molachtoi le'issa u'leheta. It's made for both. Even though it's more used for cooking than for a salad, but if it's made for both, it's not muktza. A pot is made to cook, period. Gradually you have use that you could 
storage in it as well. So it comes out to me that the a toy that has two functions, either you could wind it up and it goes with the battery, or it, you work without it. It's made for both usages. You know what it's like? It's like the adults, that many adults have a watch that has a calculator feature on it. Well, you're allowed to use that watch, just you know, don't, make, don't use the calculator on Shabbos. Now the next question is, you might come to press the button, so you have to put a blech onto the battery-operated toy. The answer is, you don't have to put a blech on the battery-operated toy, or onto the calculator watch, because blech is only on fire. Chazal made it for fire, not for anything else. Of course, you have to be careful not to do malacha. Bikes, three wheels, skates, and scooters, a big sugya, but basically, mitzara locha, there's no real issa in a bicycle on Shabbos. If you go within the air, if there's no carrying, the, the poiskim were concerned that the, it breaks easily. You might come to fix it. Shem yisakin, like Shem yisakin kleishir. Or bicycling is of the dechoyal, it's something that's disparaging Kedusha Shabbos. The Shmir Shabbos and Tezayin Yudches, I saw the Archa Shabbos, Chelik Beis, Ahmed Lamed Dalid, say we treat bicycle riding on Shabbos as an Issa. Again, we can't say it's an Issa der Eis, or it's a, necessarily any real Issa der Rabbanan, but it's definitely a strong, observed, mini Gisrael, not to dr- drive a bike, even though there's no problem of Oitzor. Bike, bicycle riding should not be done on Shabbos. However, a bicycle that's meyuchad l'ktanim, a big wheel or a three wheel that only children use is not that of the dechoyel. Taka would not be muktza. Very often you have a bicycle laying around. The kid child came home from yeshiva, dropped it off, ran and left the bicycle in a place where people can't walk. So even if the bicycle is muktza, it's only klisha malach de leisa and be mutla seyach gufa mekayimim. Today there are many musical instrument toys music mobiles, there's rattles, there are talking dolls, there are talking toys, there's a host of toys that make noise. Which could a child play with and which could an adult pick up, which is muktzah, which is not muktzah. So basically, there's another big sugi, but in the beginning of Shin Lam Ches, the Mechabah says, any hashmoas koil kli shir osa. The Mechaber says that the Yisra Hashemah's Kol is limited to a musical sound. That means a, an harmonica, a flute, a guitar, any, any instrument that makes music is Asa. A music mobile would be Asa because it plays music. But something that makes noise, even if it's Meyuchet to make noise, the Mechaber holds his mutter. The Mechaber's example is a door clapper, a door knocker. That is designed to make noise. <clears throat> But it's not a musical sound, and light the machab is mutter. The Ramah argues, and the Ramah says, we don't use even a kli, meyuchid la shmoas koyal, that's not kli shir. And that's taka why people are generally makbid not to have a door clapper. Now, God, if you have it, there's nothing wrong, you can't use it on Shabbos, but, but the people avoid having a door clapper because on Shabbos it's taka also like the Ramah. Oibazoi, it comes out that any noise making toy, a rattle, a graga, or again anything, sometimes you wind it up and it clickers and it clatters and it makes noise, whatever. The talking doll is not musical, but light the Ramah should be also. And that's true for an adult. Rabbi Shlaim Bezalman has a chiddish in Shemir HaShabbos, Tezai and Gimel, that really a toy that doesn't make noise is not the, the issa of cliche, because it's not a musical sound. Why did, why did the Ramah asa a kli that's meyuchad la shmoas koil, a non-musical sound? It's of the koil. It makes noise. Noise is the very stira to the serenity and the menucha Shabbos. So Psalm Zalman says a door clapper and any type of no, noise making machine is, a, is, is, a, is the issa of of the koil. But a child's toy we all perceive that that's not a steer to Kedusha Shabbos. It's not an Issa of Ovid the Chayel, and he's Mako for a child to play with a Kli Hashmoah's Koyel, and obviously if it's motive for the child, then it will be motive for the adult, at least to play with, to pick it up, not to, not to play with it, but it would not be Muktza. Someone asked me, his child has a pet, is it Muktza for the child, is it Muktza for the adult? So again, there's also, we once spoke about, we had a whole share about pets, but all agree 
The Mechaba says in Shem Ches Lamites that a behema chaye va'oif balechayim al muktza. Why they muktza? Ke'etzim avonim the loy chazis of the Mishnah Berurah, because you can't do anything with a pet on Shabbos with an animal. You can't ride on an animal. You can't eat the animal. So an animal is muktza. Zoch toisvis in Masech to Shabbos that mem heyim at days. Let's say you have a pet. He's talking about a parakeet, apparently. L'sachek boy ketanim that children play with it. Toisvis quotes the sheet of Rabbeinu Yosef that a a parakeet for children is not muktza, and it's very mistavra. Even if an animal is asa al kli machmas gufai, but you miyachet, you bought it. You went to the pet shop and you bought a parakeet. So Toisvis quotes Rabbeinu Yosef that it's muktza. However, Toys himself holds, I'm sorry, that's not Muktza. Toys himself holds its Muktza. Now, it's not clear why Toys holds its Muktza. Why is it not Miyuchid to play with? So the Marach or Zaru and Simon Pei Beis says the word because it's Loi Plug. The Chazal Asid Balechayim, you can't make any differentiation. But there's another Pshat, very Mustavra, a Balchai is Muktza. You want to make it into a keli, baby miyacherit. Balechayim are too choshev to make it into a keli. You can't turn an animal into a keli. Another svara, you take a stone, which is muktzah, and make it into a keli, it's not muktzah. Because you made it into a keli. But balechayim, there's an issa of shimush with balechay. You can't lean on a balechay. You can't even you know, do anything with a balechay. So if Chazal said you can't use a balechay, you can't come along and say, okay, I'm making it into a, bal- into a keili. But, but you're not allowed to use a balchai. But whatever the case is, I can't say all agree that Lachas Ketanes and Simon Memhei is matter to move a pet on Shabbos or Yom Tiv. But Ramosh and Chelek Dala, Tezayin, as most Paiskim say, we treat pets like regular balichaim and it's muktzah. If you have a neighbor that pets his animals, he has what to be Seimachan, you have the Benu Yosef and Toisvis, you have the Halachis Ketanis, but the basic mainstream Pais can say we treat pets like any other Balechaim and it's Muktza. Oi Bazoi, the parents of a child should not be petting or touching the animal. Now, if the child on his own plays with the pet and he's not a Baravana, like anything else, you could leave him. But Lamaisa, we treat pets like muktza. Ah, you'll ask it. Well, I don't get this. We said earlier a, cha, a toy that's miyuchet for a cotton is not muktza. So a pet that's miyuchet for a cotton, why don't we all say it's not muktza? Why is it different? Okay, it's very different. The muktza of a regular toy, the fact that you miyachet and make it into a keli. We just said a few svaras, you can't make a balchai into a keli. So it does never become a keli. So for the child that do, plays with it, lo yigil lechinach, fine. But it cannot become into a keli. A balchai is too chasha to be a keli. So we treat the pet like a regular muktza. For the child, lo yigil lechinach, he can do what he wants. But we as adults should not handle those pets. We had a question once where, a, it's a very rare shayla, but the earlier place we had this much more commonly, a child needed food and there was no warm food and they called the guy, and of course they're in a situation that wasn't Bishalakim, but the guy cooked food for the child on Shabbos. Why is that mutter? Because tam tzorchei kata on kechoy l'shein by sakana, and a guy could do molacha deraisa for a kata. Then someone, obviously, obviously a fruma, said, one second, the child could eat it, but how could I feed the child? The food is muktza. Ben it was raw. So the answer is, if you're allowed to call a guy to cook food on Shabbos, obviously there's a need. So you're allowed to feed that child. The Maril and the Chuvas in Simon Kuf Tezvav and the Magan Avram and Shin Chavches Tezvav quotes an Isra Veheta that says just that. He says that if there's a Heta to do Molocha for a cotton who's considered a Chayla, then if the child can't eat it on his own, the mother, the father could feed that Muksa to a child because the Isra of Muksa is overrided the Makaim of a Chayla She'ein by Sakan. Agab, for the very same reason, if a child or an adult, for that matter, suddenly became sick on Shabbos and they need antibiotics, which you happen to have extra in the house, even though Ben Hashemashah, there was no chayla in the house yet, 
But if there's a need now for the chayla, the chayla could take the medicine. Muktsa is overriding makam chayli. Question, you're sitting by the Shabbos and your child or grandchild comes in proudly, look what I have, and he has your expensive cell phone. Not a good toy for, you know, as far as you're concerned. So, for him, there's no problem because he's a like, but you have a major problem, he's playing with your toy. So, can you tell the child, quickly go and put it on my, de- my study desk. So, not so posh. Dr. Yosef Chaim Zonifel, in the Samlas Chaim, and Reish Pezayin, even though when it's Oy Debiyodoy, you could put it down, but here, by telling him to go put it where you want him to put it, he's putting it there for you, not for himself. He could complete the tiltal. He's like Yilachinach. But if you're telling him where to put it, he's putting it for your sake, and that should be awesome. What should you tell him? Tell him, listen, you're not supposed to do this on Shabbos. Put it down in the closest place. Hopefully you'll have seichel, but not to drop it on the floor and break it, but to go put it because you told him to put it in a certain place. The truth is it's hard to understand because once it's oid the biyada, he can put it down where he wants. So if you tell him where to put it, why isn't that included in the original hat of oid the biyada? So that's a ha'ara, but certainly to tell him put it down you know, in a safe place, he's putting it down for himself, that would not be a problem. I saw in the in Sefer Shavuz Yitzchak, the end of Perik Yud Aleph, quotes Rabbi Yashiv, saying the following, a child's holding an expensive item, but your mouse is holding it right over a couch. So you go and take his hand, and basically you like sort of drop the item with him onto the couch so it's in a safe landing. So Rabbi Yashiv says that really, for the child to do that's fine, but for the adult to grab the hand and move the muktza, even though it's a tiltal minatzad, but it's tiltal minatzad to erdav muktza. You're doing it to save the muktza, so better the adult should not get involved because then the adult is moving muktza minatzad to erdav muktza. Now, if your kavana is lafushi misuri, you don't want the child to do any muktza, then you could, then you probably could do it. You're doing it for the child's sake, for the chinuch of the child. Or, let's say the following scenario. You want to go take the child out to shul. He's holding the muktza. You can't take him out when he's holding muktza. You don't want to carry in the street bachlal. So then you tell him to put it down, or you could even encourage him to put it down, because then you tilt him in atzad, the tzayach dava hamutta, to get the child to shul. That I saw in the Sefer Nishmas Shabbos, on, in Hilchas, in, in uh, muktza amit taf ayin zayin. Now, he also says to tap the child's hand lightly and the child drops it, that's not tiltal muktza as far as the, the adult is concerned. Question. Seems like a simple question, but it happens to be a big sugya. You, you were in the bungalow colony and there's an area there's no problem as far as I saw. You're walking with your child or grandchild and you notice he's holding muktza in his hand. A real muktza. He's holding a stone. So, but I'm not touching the stone. I'm holding my child's right hand and the left hand is holding muktza. Is there any problem with that? So what could be the problem? I'm not touching the muktza. He's not, I'm, not, I'm not even interested in the muktza. He's carrying the muktza. So this is a Mishnah in Shabbos, Kuf Malab on the base. Noi tol adam es benoi vo evan biyadoi. You're allowed to take the child. Well, soon see, either means hold the child by his hand or even literally carry the child Who's holding muktza? Ah, so Rashi, and it's not considered tiltal muktza of the father. Okay. Question is, what's the chiddush? But wait, the Gemara says punk fakert. The only time it's mutter to walk with the child or carry the child, so the Gemara, the same Amid, kavmal of my base, but tinek sheyesh legaguam al aviv. That means the child will be very distraught if he can't carry his muktza. And the Rashi says the Lushen, it's going to almost be a shtikl sakana. So the child very much needs that muktzah in his hand. You're allowed to either carry the child or walk with the child who's carrying muktzah. Now this is very hard to understand. And let's say the child is not, does not have gagun. Okay, what if they come on to sakana, suffix sakana? I'm holding the child's hand and he has muktzah in the other hand. Why is that my problem? Why isn't that tiltul min hatsad? Let's say Yochdav Amutah, Zokte Prima Godem and Eishlav Ram Aleph and the Shuri Hashabbos says the same thing. Quoting of Shlaim Bezalman, 
Mishra Rabbi's Chav Bey Sadik Tess, that Tiltul Min Hatzad is Mutter because it's not the Derech of Tiltul. But here, that's the normal way of transporting Mutzah. The child holds it and you walk with the child. Zogta Mishra Burr and Sif Katan Dalid, walking with the child that's holding Mutzah is Tiltul Biodayim for the parent. The only hat is Gaguim, which comes to a suffix Akana. The Rav Shukhan Aruch has a, a, a more practical shot. Tiltum and is only Mutter if there's a Tzayrach. If you could tell the t- child, drop it, so then you do that. So, Mamanashach, if there's no Gaguim, so what are you Tiltum and for? What's your hat? For no reason. If there's Gaguim, then there's enough of a Tzayrach. In other words, to walk with a child that's holding muktza is not enough of a tzayrich. And to me was the most beautiful pshat, the Chazenish in Memzai and Dalid, Ravaz Mechel, Kei Mem Gimel explains this also, that you want the child to be happy. You want the child should hold his stone so he's happy. So therefore, you're mechavin to move the muktza. You want the child to be happy. So it's like the child, the parent has a rod sign that the, the, the muktza should be transported. But whatever the case is, we have a Gemara and the Machab in Shentes, Sif, Aleph, Pasim, like this. You can't walk with your child or carry the child that has Muktz in his hand. I say or because the, there are two days in Shulchan Aruch. Is it only if you're carrying the child that has Muktz in his hand or even walking with the child that has Muktz in his hand? And the Shulchan Aruch is Machmir. That one should not carry a child that has muktza, or even walk with a child that has muktza in the other hand. And that's why Lamaisa, this is something that comes up all the time, we don't realize it, like this Shulchan Aruch, walking with a child that has muktza, is a problem. That's a new halacha of child and Hilchas muktza. What would be if there's muktza in a stroller, with the child is holding the muktza in a stroller? So the first reason that that's tiltul biyadayim doesn't apply. It can't be tiltul biyadayim if I'm pushing a child in a stroller. But the other two reasons do apply. The Beis Yosef in Simen Shin Ches, in Ois Chav Gimel, in the New Prince, records the following bizarre minik. It's bizarre because it's Kenegin Allah, Chapashtis, that when a child first came to shul for the first time, he was accompanied by the parent, naturally, and the child was carrying a ca- an unlit candle in his hand. Zakti Beis Yosef, on the candle in his hand. Zakti Beis Yosef, ah, it's the child's carrying muktzah, but no problem. Just like you could be miyached branches to sit on it, you could be miyached a candle to carry it to shul. Zakti, zakti Beis Yosef, but I don't see the raya. It's not a good raya. It's a wrong minig. Zakti Machz Shekel, why is it a wrong minig? Why you can't miyached it? So Zokta Machza Shekel, and this is in Shin Ches, on the Magaram Sivkat and Yud Ches, and that's really the Pashat of Shat, when Yemi Yachid branch to sit on, it becomes a chair. But Yemi a candle to carry it, what, what keli is it? What kind of function is it? It's not a keli. If it's not a keli, it's Mukta. Zokta Magan Avram, I have another problem. Yesh Lahachmer, Ayin Reish Simen Shin Tes. What does he mean? Ayn Reish Simen Shin Tes. Beautiful. Mom is beautiful. You're, you're, you're baglating your child to shul for the first time. He's carrying a candle. It's not his problem. It's your problem. Shin Tes, Aleph, we just learned, holding a child is holding Mukt is an awesome. So it's not the child's problem, it's the adult's problem. Also, he says, Ayn Simen Shin Mem Gimel. My grandma is very bekitzik, but there's so much to it. What does he mean to say? Even if the child you can't give him Issa in his hand. Sapinan. No, a candle is taka not meyuchalaktanim. A candle is mukt, so you can't give it to the child. Zakti prima gadim, but who had din avid mitzvah lafrisha? What does that mean? Even if it's loyigil, even if even if he took it on his own, the v'chiyav chenach. So in a simple minig, we have three major yisaidus. Number one. It's Muktzah and Yichud doesn't help. Number two, it's Simen Shin Tess of holding a child. Number three, it's either Sapina Biodayim or Chinuch, both in Simen Shin Mem Gimel. Question. You see a child that's carrying Muktzah and the child's Higil the Chinuch. Do you as a parent have to be Meicha? 
You wonder, what's the shayla? He's doing, yes, I have to be moicha. And that's the pashtas. If a child, shegiel lechinech, is touching muktz, you have to be moicha. I saw once a chiddush, Rabbi Moshe Mot Chakap Zangzunt has a sefer on a Masech the Shabbos in the beginning of the Perik, on Hilchas, on Yisraelis of Muktza, and he says, no, 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 could be there's no chiv chinech on Muktza. I, why? And what's his makar? He says, ayin kuf memala from a beis. The raya lechari is an interesting raya. Because the problem is, I can't hold my child who's carrying Muktza. The problem is for me. Why isn't there a chiv on me to be moicha that my child's carrying mukta? Forget about me. What about my, my chinuch as far as the child's concerned? So he says, maybe mukta, there's no chiv chinuch because it's always mutter to do it by ifan heta. Kibimiachirit, klishmach leisa. So he says, there's no chiv chinuch on mukta. Now, the Mai says it's a pella because the, the Gemara in Shabbos, Kumal was talking about a cotton. It's like you give a chinuch. So therefore, there's no problem beside the cotton, but the problem beside me that I'm moving muktza. So the rai is a hard rai to understand. Now we'll go back to what we said originally. Question. A child was miyached stones before Shabbos to use. Can the adult use that stone to hold down his page? So what's the shayla? We said earlier, if someone's miyached, other people could use it. But here we come to a pasha to Yisoyed. The Toysis Shabbos in the Agdama to Simon Shin Ches writes that to be yachet something, you need das. A cotton doesn't have das. Bein le isa, bein le heta. So according to this Toysis Shabbos, it comes out that a child that was miyachet a toy, or miyachet stones, I should say, won't help for the, for the parent. Because it's still muktza, because the child doesn't have a das to miyachet it. But the good news is fakert. Let's say the child before Shabbos took muktza and made a buses out of it. He made, put a heta and the muktza on top of the buses and he did it with kavana to stay the entire Shabbos. So the chayr, now it's muktza the whole Shabbos. It's a buses for Issa. But zok the bejana rov and das teresh in ches sivchav beis. It's not true. Why? Because you, to make bus you have to have das and the child doesn't have das. So it comes out the chumrah he can't be miyachet muktzah, and the cool he can't make a bosses. But what to me I found mamish absolutely beautiful. We had a question before: Why is a ball muktzah? So I told you the pashtip shat because not enough of a tzoyrech can't make a keli. If you look at the Magen Avram and Shem Chesiv Kot and Ayin Beis, he quotes a kol boy: Oslo Taltal Kador did a machshafte lemajvi keli. And what does he mean? I'll tell you what he means. Ken Zayin, the ball is muktzah because it's not really a keli. Why should it be mutta? Because the child made it into a keli. A child can make it into a keli. So the reason why it's muktzah is of the pima godim of an art is the ain machshafta klum. So the reason why a ball is muktzah is because the child is not qualified to make it into a keli. So this to me was beautiful. So I looked up in the original Shibali Aleket, which he's quoting from. And listen to the Lashin, I'm sorry, I said before Kobe, I mean the Shabali Aleket in Simon Kuf Chafalif that the Magnum is quoting from. And listen to the Lashin. Kadurim Shalanu Afilu Kli Loi Chashivi Umachsheves Haschoik Shechishev Lusachek Boy Loi Mashvi Loi Kli. It doesn't say Machsheves Hakotom. Machsheves Haschoik. What is the, the Shibali Aleket really saying the reason why it's, it's Mukta? Because ball playing is not enough of a Tsoyrech. So, Magen Avram had a different gear, so probably, Machshev HaSakot. So, the Maisa, ball playing today is Mutta, but there you see another Svara white ball in those days was Mutta, the cotton is not enough. And last but not least, let me just tell you very briefly, someone once told a child to move something that was Mutta. Someone says, what are you doing? You know, I'll do that. Nah, he's a layagil lechenach. That's wrong. You can't have a child move Mutta. The only time that perhaps there's a head to have a child move muktza is something that really is not so clearly awesome. If it's a question of adult versus a child moving something that's really muktza but yash lahachmir, that in the end of Rashi and test, the Mechaba says when you have a choice of doing a cotton, cotton is better than a gadol. But and this is important, don't send the wrong message. To tell a child, oh, you could do it, but it's not a kind, is wrong. 
He's a kind, but there's a din of chinuch, there's a din of safina biyadayim. The fact that it's not a kind is not a heta. When something is muta, but you rather, but you be machmir, then the child should do it, but it should be told, mein kind, this is muta on Shabbos. When I have a personal chumrah, you could do it. But to send the wrong message is wrong, I couldn't talk to you all. Shame, you can shoot a toilet, you'll be a shakach, to a smith for today's share, at least. A smith will say, seek him of today's share in five minutes. Chananya ben Akashem, a rotzak, a rishbaruch, a rizakis, a sisur. Fika, hirbal, em toyer, a mitzvah, shenem, a loyne, chofes, a man, tzitke, yagdul, toyer, viyade. Okay, we have now. What do you want to ask? If it hasn't been used yet, he's giving you the gift. Please from Rachel Isra. What? Please from Rachel Isra. There is not a Rachel Isra. The Sefer Torah had that never been used. It doesn't have a Gedusha yet. Yeah, but it's not Rachel Isra. This is Isra. No, no, no. It's Rachel Isra. Ready? It hasn't been used. But it was to seek him, the children and the parents stay here. Yeah, grandchildren, any kind of seek him. Just uh, we learned today a, a lesson. You have to learn halacha. You see a lot of mutter that we don't even realize. It seems it came out to us at least that toys that are meyuchat v'ktanim, even if the toys would be muktzah mitzad halacha, but toys that are meyuchat v'ktanim should not be muktzah because it's like an eitzim avonim that meyachet it. So if that's true, then not only the ch- children can play with the toys for sure, but it's mutter for the parents to pick up the toys and even to play with the toys with the children. If it's toys that are and the parent 
bought it for the child. Now, as opposed to the child that's playing with the parent's cell phone, which is not miyuchel lektanim, or or a pen that's not miyuchel lektanim, but toys that are miyuchel lektanim doesn't involve any real issa. We mutter for the children and mutter for the adults. We said a gil lechinach is when he could do appreciates to do the mitzvah properly. That's five or six years old. A baravana for isurim is at a younger age, probably four, maybe even three, if he's mature enough. Under that age, there's no reason to torture the child. If he's not ready, he's not ready. Miyuchid, the yichud svar helps by a stone, and once he miyachid it to use, then it's mutter for all. Lav dafka, the one that was miyachid it. Give a child muktza. If it's really muktza, is asa al tzafinan, because even la yeginach, you can't be. You can't supply an Issa to a child. To give a child a pen to write with, even though the parent could use the pen, let's say, but to give the child a, the pen that's going to use it for Issa is not Tzayrach Gufay, because writing on Shabbos is Asa, and has to be Tzayrach Gufay of Heta. To make a show for a child using Kalisha Malach del Issa, you juggle, Muktza, whatever it is, that's fine, that's Tzayrach Gufay of the parent. Or the parent wants to get some sleep, you give the child... Muktza to go play with Malach Isa, that would be Tzara Gufay of the parent. To give a Klish Malach Isa as a gift, a Muktza gift that you that basically you can't use. But we saw Rabbi Kiva Ega is Mekel. I, I forgot to mention, not all agree with Rabbi Kiva Ega's Yisoid, but at least according to Rabbi Kiva Ega, giving a Klish Malach Isa Muktza on Shabbos, besides the Isa of giving a gift, the Kenya will be done before Shabbos, is not a problem as far as the Muktza according to Rabbi Kiva Ega. Balls today is not muktza. Even the Machab agrees it was made specifically as a keili. It is a keili, and ball playing has become more of a passion that it becomes enough of a keili. Battery operated toys, of course, with the battery part should not be used, but if it's, it could be used manually, it should be okay. Bikes we treat as muktza. If you need to place it, Sarah Mekaymai. Big wheels or other bikes that are not over the Dechoyal, we mutta on Shabbos, it's not a muktza at all. A noise-making machine is a problem, a noise-making device, a toy, is an Issa, according to the Ramah, the Machab is Mekel, Machab only asks musical instruments, but like the Ramah, noise-making toys is Asa, and therefore is Muktzer. If a Zalman had a Chiddush, you could give a child to play with it, because it's, the Issa is over the Choyal, and a toy is not over the Choyal. Pets, we treat Muktzer as Muktzer across the board, it shouldn't be handled, those that are Mekel have what to be Seymachan. Medicine, that is sudden needed on Shabbos is like a guy that cooks for a choyla on Shabbos. If the if it warrants bishul on Shabbos, and you're allowed to do it, then of course you you we chazal wave the issa of muktza. I should have mentioned that the Bura says when you're giving a choyla muktza the medicine, it's kedai to you make a shinoi. This way you could reduce the issa. Of course, if the choyla is waiting for it desperately, don't start making shinoi. But if it's, it won't uh, have any impact on the choyla's well-being. Try to use a shinui. If the child's holding a muktzah, tell him to put it down. He shouldn't carry it into the room because that's a tilt for the parent. Walking a child that's holding muktzah is asamid rabbanan. It's a form of tilt muktzah. Certainly carrying a child that's holding muktzah is an isad rabbanan. In the stroller, when the child's holding muktzah in the stroller, should also be asa. We explain the minig, the incorrect minig of coming to shul with a child carrying a candle, an unlit candle. It's at least the Issa of Tiltal Muktza because the parent is leading the child. It could also be the Issa of Safinan or Chinuch. Basically, it's the minute we don't see any longer for very good reason. A cotton that makes, that makes Muktza Ois Muktza doesn't work because you need Das. And a cotton that makes Muktza by a Basis is also doesn't work because the child doesn't have Das to make into Muktza. And as we said, Lechatchila, when, and when someone is Machma not to do something, there is a Shulchan Aruch, in Reish and Tess, you better tell the child to do it better than you doing it. But should, this should not send the wrong message. There's an Issa of Chinuch with a child. There's an Issa of Safinan. When a child is asked to do something, you could tell him, Mein Kind, this is really Muta, but I'm Machmer, and you're, you're young to be Machmer. But it shouldn't send the message that Shabbos for Ketanim is Muta, because it's really not. to you for listening already.
take this apart, something that may 